Hi guys, welcome to the podcast. Um, today I have a good friend. This guy I've been wanting to to collaborate with him for a very long time, right? Um, when I first met him, it was through Mr. A, right? It was through yeah, Mr. A. a, yeah, Mr. A. Um, in 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 college, in 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 PE college, right? Um, and I got to learn more about his business and and you know and and that was something that also motivated me because i got to learn more about um where he actually came from and what he was doing and where he was actually heading to and i i know where he's heading to and and it's 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 just it's 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 a journey that that i i still even right now enjoy um seeing right so right now guys i have banele moi right um, it's it's Vanel Moy, right? Your your surname, yeah. 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 So Vanel Moy, welcome to to the podcast. Um, Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, no Thanks. problem, man. It, it it was something that I really wanted to do, but I just didn't have the time to to actually be able to 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 go through with it. But but yeah, Vanel um Vanel uh, Vanel um if you don't mind me asking, man, could could you please tell us more about um, who Banele is, right? Your background. Yeah. Okay. So, um, thanks for having me, man. Um, it's an honor, complete honor to be on your podcast. Yeah. Um, and I also um hope that at least by the end of this discussion, yeah. Uh, um, you know, I would have at least made a difference to at least one person's life would be maybe listening to this podcast. Exactly. All right. So, um, my name, as you said, is Bane Lemoy. Yeah. Um, I grew up in Motherwell, um, in a middle class family. And uh, most people don't know this, but my story actually starts in primary school uh, when I was dyslexic. So, okay. I used to be very severely dyslexic. Um, but now I am still dyslexic. Um, although now I am, um, I have mild symptoms of dyslexia. So for those who don't know what dyslexia is, um, dyslexia is actually a condition where um, a person um, struggles to read um, and struggles to write or can't write and can't read at all. So completely, you can't read and you can't write. So that's what dyslexia, dyslexia is. It's the inability to do those simple things. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I for, so for me, it basically meant that from grade um, one up until grade um, eight, I could not read and I could not write. So I couldn't read and I couldn't write at all. You know, um, not like, um, you know, at least some people can't read a little bit, but they can at the same time. Okay. And they um, also can write certain words, but at least for the most part, they can. Okay. Completely like do any of those things. So I do not know what writing is and what reading is. So I struggled to read and write from grade one up until grade um, eight, when I started um, learning a little bit how to do those things. You know, uh, when I started teaching myself, you know, and sitting with a book every day and trying to basically figure out what, um, basically trying to figure out how can I read and how can I write, you know, because um, I became very fr frustrated, you know, um, to a point whereby I actually ended up doing certain things, you know, that I should not have been doing because I was dyslexic, you know, and as I, towards my um, grade eight, when I was about to go into high school. So obviously I still couldn't read, you know, so I started asking myself important questions, you know, like uh, if I can't read and I can't write, then how am I basically going to live my life? How am I um, gonna be able to one day help my kids do their homework? You know, um, how am I, um, going, going to be able to to contribute to society and how am I going to be able to work and start 
businesses and all of that if i cannot do things you know uh one day maybe i would be required to sign a contract whatever but how am i going to do that if i can't read and i can't write you know so i started asking myself those sorts of important questions you know and mm. Um, that became a very um, concerning thing to me, you know, although some people around me, you know, didn't know that I was, I was asking myself those, those kinds of questions. So um, that now ended up um, in me doing bad things, you know, because I did not find myself fitting in, you know, at school. I did not find myself fitting in, you know, with the nerds, you know, with the... Yeah top 10, top five um, students in class or the grade at that time, you know. So I did not fit anywhere at school except um, with the bad guys, you know, the kids who would be doing bad things and wrong things. That's where I found belonging, you know, as mm -hmm. a dyslexic boy who at that time was not even diagnosed. Um, so my parents didn't know what was wrong with me. My uh, friends didn't know. My teachers also didn't know. You know, um, still to this day, a lot of people still don't know what dyslexia is. We actually tend to laugh at people who uh, are dyslexic, not knowing exactly what is wrong with them. And they call them names, you know, and say, um, um, this person is dumb because they can't read and they can't write. Not knowing that that person was born with dyslexia. Yeah. So it had nothing to do with um, your intelligence. So I'll make you an example. Um, after I realized um, that I was dyslexic, I started to realize that this thing was actually, you know, I was not alone. In fact, a lot of um, famous people are dyslexic, you know. Um, Richard Branson is also dyslexic. Okay. I think Oprah Winfrey is also dyslexic. I think Picasso was also dyslexic. So I can name a lot of people who are dyslexic, you know. Okay. But um, having dyslexia doesn't mean that um, you're not going to be able to read and write, you know, for a long time. But some people who are severely dyslexic, you know, um, they go through their life not being able to read and write, you know. Yeah. So they go to adulthood, you know, um, in their 40s, 50s, and they still can't write, you know. But fortunately for me, um, I started um, um, having mild symptoms of dyslexia when I was in grade 8. So, which means um, I started being learning to be, to, I started learning to, to read and write, you know, in grade eight and grade nine. So, when I got out of high school, I was actually now in the top 10 um, best performing students in my class, you know. So, from, uh, so from dyslexia, not being able to read and write my whole primary school years yeah. to uh, when I, when I got to my grade um, 12, you know, being um, a top 10 student so that for me was like you know a completely new thing for a dyslexic kid you know because okay. I, I I I still remember that even when I started learning to read and write you know around grade um, grade 8 and grade 9 you know it was still a new thing for me and I was becoming very excited about because for me you know it 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 it, it felt like a superpower being able to read and write, you know, mm. whereas for um, other kids, it like it was a normal thing, yeah. you know, but for me, someone who uh, was literally praying, you know, and was literally um, crying and asking God, you know, to be able to help me in this situation, you yeah. know, because people were laughing at me and they didn't know, you know, and I was also asking God at some point, like, what did I deserve, you know, to, to, to have this punishment where I'm literally the only kid in class who can't read and write, you know? So it was a huge thing for me, you can imagine, when I got to age yeah. nine and I could um, now, I, I, was now be, I was now able to read, you know, some, a few words like can, get, how, why, yeah. whatnot, you know? Up until now, where I'm actually... <laughs> even better than people who started reading and <laughs> writing, you know, in, in primary school. Yeah. So um, from there, um, yeah, so obviously I, I, I passed my grade 12 and then I had to now choose um, um, 
tertiary education. I had to now go to tertiary education. So I went to um, PE college. So I went to PE college and I started marketing management there. Um, and I think that's how we, me and we met. Yeah. Um, so um, from there, I started, um, I started marketing management. And then what happened is um, somehow, some way, I was not funded by NSPAS. So I did not get funding from NSPAS somehow. Um, and it was around, I think, um, February yeah, of that year when I realized that uh, um, other kids were, other, other students in my class were getting their NSFAS money and mm-hmm. mine was not getting my account. So when I went to the bursary office, they gave me a lot of stories as to why I was not funded, you know. So um, at that point, again, now I had two options. I either had to, um, sorry, I had three options actually. Okay. I either had to pay the money um, on my own or um, I could um, drop out or I could get a job and then fund my education. Mm. So, um, unfortunately, I did not have, my parents did not have the money to um, pay out of their pockets because my dad got retrenched at work in, in 2018, who was actually the sole breadwinner at home. Okay. You know, so uh, we did not have much money. Um, as I said, it was a middle-class family. Um, and also, um, I did not want the option of dropping out, you know. Yeah. So I chose the third option, which was to basically get a job so that I can continue my education and fund it. So I went to Magin Bean in Greenacres and submitted my CV, you know, and immediately um, they took me and I worked there as a barrister um in 2020 yeah i think it was 2020 yeah i worked there as a barrister um so i unfortunately um now i had to uh, work at mug and bean full time and then i had to you know study part time you yeah. know so that i can also um i can do both things at the same time you know so i was working during the day and then around 4 p.m., I would go to class, attend classes up until 6 o'clock, and mm-hmm. then go home, you know. So that's how I basically funded my education until COVID came, um, when now, as you know, most restaurants were put on, you know, short time, and mm-hmm. some restaurants were, had to operate at 50% um, capacity. So... Unfortunately, again, I came across another challenge where now all of us as staff, again, were also put on short time, which means that um, now uh, we, were not at, we were not going to work um, six out of seven days, you know, like we would normally do, but we were going to work like um, two out of six days or one out of six okay. days, you know. So, so now that now impacted uh, my ability to find now my education again, because you must remember that I got the job so that I can pay for my school fees, I can pay for my transport, and I can also pay for my books. So um, now it impacted um, uh, me being able to do those things again. So now I had to find another solution as to, you know, what I was going to do. So during that time, I had also, while I was working at Market Bean, I'd also learned how to, um, you know, make coffee, cappuccino, mm-hmm. lattes, and all of that, you know, the sort of artisanal coffee that most people would drink when they go to a, a Mug and Bean or to any type of basically cafe. So I had learned how to do those things, you know, mm-hmm. and I had started buying myself equipment, you know, because I... I wanted to start my own thing after leaving Mug and Bean, you know, because I loved my job as a barrister. So fortunately, I already had that equipment, uh, but now it was time to use it, you know. Yeah. Um, so I decided that I would take all of my equipment that I had already bought. And then during that short time, um, on the days that I was not working at Mug and Bean, I would basically go to Summer Strand uh, and then... Um, 
you know, sell coffee there, you know, because um, that for me is the spot and the place that made the most sense. Yeah. You know, good morning because I know that there's a lot of people there who like um, buying coffee, you know. Yeah. So I went there this one day. I uh, went there with my equipment, you know, and I stood there, you know, and it was a very um, scary thing at first because, um, first of all, you don't know the response that you're going to get, you know. You don't know if people are going to just laugh at you, you know, yeah. and people are going to support you, you know. You don't know what's going to be the response, basically, you know. Yeah. But um, I was, the thought process went to me, became, look, um, just you know, go there and then you'll see what's going to happen, you know. Um, because at the end of the day, even if I do go there, two things are either going to happen, you know, it's either people are going to support me or people are not going to support me at all, you know. I won't yeah. die at the end of the day, so I was like, no, let's uh, let me rather go, you know, instead of um, not going there and uh, having the regret that should yeah. have, should have. And, you know what would have happened yeah so i ended up going there, you know uh with all my coffee equipment you know and i stood there i i i had a nice setup actually that i put there um so i went there and i stood there for the first day you know it was very scary um so while i was there so while i was standing there another lady approached me you know um white lady um, called uh, Michelle Brown. She's still my friend up until yeah. now. So um, she approached me, you know, and she, um, I didn't know at that time, you know, but she was a very known, uh, she was a very well-known lady here yeah. in PE. She's actually in PR. So she does a lot yeah. of PR work, you know, for big um, companies here in Nelson Mandela Bay and across, you know, South Africa. Yeah. So she approached me, you know, and told me that she likes what I'm doing, you know, and um, she bought a few coffees and she also took mm. um, some pictures of me, you know. And then um, she, later on that day, she uploaded the picture on her Facebook, you know, she posted it there and basically told people that, um, you know, they need to support me. There's this young man who's doing this and that, you know. On so your first that, day. Yeah, on my first day. <laughs> so... Um, that post got a lot of interest from people, you know, it got a lot of interest. I think it had about a hundred comments or so mm. uh, of people saying, um, tomorrow I'm going to see him there, I'm going to support him, we're going to go and buy, you know, so I was excited. So I was excited the following day because there was yeah. a lot of comments there on that, a lot of people, and a lot of people shared the, the, the post as well. But what I didn't know is that the post also attracted um, news publications, houses yeah. like Herald, IOL, you know, ETV, uh, News24, in all these places, you know, and also I'll go FM, I'll go news, I'll go out, all these um, news publication houses, you know. So the following day, I went there. When I got there, there was a, like a line of 10 to 15 people waiting to buy coffee, you know. I, I I I hadn't even like set up my equipment yet, but uh, there was already a line of people line. just waiting to buy the coffee, you know, seeing that post from the uh, day before, you know, from Michelle. Okay. So um, that day I actually sold out all of my coffee, um, all of my coffee that day. I literally, you know, I used to leave there at, so I used to be there at, um, from 7 a.m. Yeah. up to 12, you know, because that's the time where people buy the most coffee during the morning, you know, so I usually leave at 12. But that day, I got there at 7 a.m. By 10 a.m., I had already sold out all of my coffee, <laughs> you know. And when, so, I, when, when, I say, when I say sold out, I'm actually talking about um, 25 cups that okay. I actually sold today. You know, um, and each cup is was about I think um twenty twenty five rand yeah yeah, so I actually sold all of my coffee that day you know, and then I came again the following day same thing happened there yeah. was like twenty people you know and one person each would maybe buy four to five copies and they would buy for their friends you know people passing by you know 
So I was making a lot of money. At my yeah. beginning, I was making about um uh, a thousand rand a week. Mm-hmm. Then I was making like um seven hundred, eight hundred to nine hundred rand a day. A day. <laughs> Compared to what I was making like yeah. a week, rand a week at my NP. So yeah, there was so, a change. Uh, yeah. Um, so I was started thinking, you know, do, why do I need to go back to work when here yeah, with this coffee I'm earning 800 rand a day when at work I'm in I'm earning 1000 rand a week, you know, a it doesn't week. make sense. Yeah. <laughs> That makes sense. So, um, so during that week, there was like a lot of hype and a lot of activity. Um, I got interviews from Herald, Algoa FM, you know, radio stations. Mm. So there was a lot of hype. You know, I got contacted from people with from people from Cape Town. You know, yeah. um, people from Dubai. You know, wanted my bank accounts and they wanted to send me money. Mm you know, to my account, you know, saying that they like what I'm doing and all of that, you know, people from um, other provinces send me messages yeah. on, on Facebook saying they read my story um, on their local publications, you know, saying that mm-hmm. they like what I'm doing, you know, I must keep going. So um, there was a lot of that, you know, uh, but unfortunately, um, I think about uh, three weeks later, yeah, the ban was lifted on restaurants, you know, so now restaurants could um, mm. operate at their full capacity again. And so now again, I had to go back to work, you know, and leave now what I was doing there. Yeah. So I went back to work, you know, and I started working normally. I went to school again and then uh, paid my school fees and then I paid for my transportation and my books yeah. and all of that. So I left Okay, so Magen being closed down in 2021. Yeah, in September 2021. Yeah, so Magen being closed down, you know, because of um, the effects of COVID, you know. Okay. Uh, so they were in financial difficulties, you know, so they had to close down and everyone who was working, they was retrenched, you know. So now I had to, you know, look at another way of making money. So um, it happened that when I was working at Magen Bean, I bought myself, you know, a small scooter because I wanted to save on the costs, you know, that I was, uh, that I had, you know, to pay for uh, public, like buses and all mm. of that, you know. So I bought myself a small scooter um, so that I can save on the transportation, you know, um, not knowing that that scooter would come in handy when Magen Bean closed down. So Magen Bean closed down, you know, so now I had this scooter that was sitting at the back of my house. And then I was thinking like, how do I make money with this thing? You know, how do you monetize the scooter? You know, so I went to Google and I searched, how do you make money with um, your, your, your scooter? You know, and yeah. one of the recommendations that came up is basically do deliveries with the scooter, you know, food yeah. deliveries in your area. And then I looked around in my area and then I realized that there was actually a huge need for food deliveries you know okay. because there were no food deliveries at that time you know um so i actually started a small food delivery business called easy deliveries yeah and using that one scooter you know and then um on the first day um i got i got like one order that first day you know okay. and then i kept advertising the orders grew more and more and more and more and more you know up yeah. until now, I had to hire um, other uh, other guys, you know, to help me with deliveries because um, I could no longer do deliveries alone, you know. Yeah. So at like one point, I had about um, eight scooters and eight guys all doing deliveries at the same time, you okay. know, um, up until I pivoted with that business. And then I realized that um, that model was not um, going to work anymore, you know, out using my own scooters and hiring my own guys, you know. So if I wanted to compete with Mr. D Food and Uber Eats, you know, I had to use the same model that they were using, which is the contractor model, the independent yeah. contractor model that they use now, you know. So okay. basically um, using other people's cars and not mine and using other people's bikes and not mine, not you know. 
Yeah. So that's what I did. Um, I I pivoted the business. Um, so I sold all of my scooters and then I basically used other people's cars, you know. Okay. So I marketed uh, the business as like something that was uh, would enable people to, 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 to have an extra income, you know. If you yeah. were working maybe during the week, but you were off at work during the weekend and you had a car. So you could basically sign up with easy deliveries, you know, and start doing deliveries during the weekends when your car is not doing anything. Yeah. So that's what I did. Um, so I pivoted the business. Um, we started doing it that way. You know, it worked. Um, the orders keep growing. You know, the business also kept growing as well. Um, so I went to a few competitions and won some competitions from that business as well. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it basically grew from there, you know. And then up until, and you know, we came across a few challenges you know, that we came across and I had to shut the business down, you know. Um, but after shutting the business down, you know, I had to again look at, you know, other ways to keep going, you know, because yeah. I, 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 I don't want to sit in one place, you know, and do nothing. I, I, I would always remember words that, um, you know, my boss at Magen Bean would tell me, you know, and say to me, uh, my boss at, at Magen Bean was actually another lady called Mrs. Naika. So the franchise was owned by her and her husband. Okay. So I consider Mrs. Naika a very, um, you know, one of the people that I look up to. You know, I also consider her to be a mentor to me, you know, because um, there's a lot of um, things that she taught me and a lot of things that, you know, I learned from her as from well, her. you know. So one of the things that I learned, you know, from Mrs. Naika is that, you know, at, 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 at one point, um, she, said, she said to me, you know, um, you always have to fail forward, you know, yeah. you always fail forward, don't stop, you know, when um, something, when you come across challenges, no matter how big or small, you know, don't stop and complain, you know, about how you don't have any resources, you know, yeah. about how, um, you know, um, don't base, basically don't complain about the misfortunes, you know, look for mm -hmm. ways in which you can, you can, you can take yourself out of that situation, you know, look for ways in which you can um, try moving forward regardless of the challenges, you know. Yeah. So, like, so again, I had to now, you know, fail forward, you know, so to say. So I failed forward, you know, and then I pivoted into being a real estate agent, you know. So um, even um, now, I still do a lot of things on the side, you know, yeah. um, that because of time, you know, I don't think I should mention them because of time, you know. But um, I, 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 I pivoted to being a real estate agent, you know um that i still am now yeah you know? okay so um being a real estate agent it's been a, it's been a really nice and um enriching journey you know i i i i really would never have thought you know, that from selling coffee basically in the stand in summer strand you know yeah. uh, basically now be become a real estate agent you know and uh work in one of the most biggest interest industries in yeah, the world in the world and things about property that I didn't know and learn the different laws and bylaws that govern property and learn how um, 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 the, the, the basically the, the 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 insider information of the industry how it works you know the different roles played by the different stakeholders in okay. the industry from um uh, from the um, bond originators you know to the banks themselves you know to the clients to the conveyances to the attorneys you know to the deeds office you know mm. so yeah that's basically my story and that's basically you know uh where i am right now you know with my life you know i'm still a real estate agent um, and I'm still pushing, you know, a lot of things on the side that I um, obviously don't want to, you know, mention because of time. 
you know, some projects I'm still um, also busy with, you Thank know. You. Uh, so, yeah, man, that's where I am right now. Okay. Hey, man, that's, that, that's good to, to actually hear your story, you know, and, and you, you, the, the, the way you actually um, spoke about it, you know, and you, you didn't really get to a point where you were like, you're going to be hiding this part and this part. You actually shared everything, you know, and which, and, and your story, as, as I did mention to you that um, your story, it's actually inspiring, you know, because even even with me, um, as you know, I, I run an agency, right? And there are there are certain things that come, right? And that I would need to to, to face. And, and at some point, um, when when I get to hear stories like yours, right? You know, those stories they 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 actually even at a, if I'm at a point where I'm like, yes, things are not going good, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, when 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 I hear about when I think about those kinds of stories, you know, I'm like, hey, if 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 um, you know, then I I could also do that because it's something that is possible, right? Yeah, yeah. it's it's something that is possible, and I think you 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 mentioned also that um your 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 mentor right um told you that you you need to fail forward, right? In everything that you okay. do, you need to fail forward. Because also at, at the very same time, as much as you, as much as you, 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 let's say as much as you, you would think that you're failing in something, but you don't know what would happen tomorrow if you were to quit that thing, you know? So it's, it's important to keep on going forward, you know? So uh, for, from, from your story, yeah, from your story, that, that was, that is something that even myself, when I'm at a point where I'm like, hey, I keep on thinking about stories like yours, right? And those stories yeah. they inspire you. They, they inspire you as a person, you know. But now, yeah. But now, just just to just to get to to, um, you you did mention that you were you were you, you were covered by 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 a few, um, you know, yeah. So so I I wanted you to to actually um tell us more about those those publications that actually covered your story and stuff like that. Um, you didn't really get to, you didn't really get to a point where you you explained that part, you know. So I would really mm. like, love to know more about about that, you know. Yeah. So, um, some of the publications that um that wrote, you know, on that story were, um, I think Algoa Algoa. Yeah, it's Algoa Live. Yeah, on Facebook, it's Algoa Live, not Algoa News. Okay. So the Algoa, Algoa has, um, also Algoa is a media company. Mm. So they have they have this division of Algoa Radio, which most people know if you yeah. from here in the other day. Yeah. And then they also have Algoa Live, which is for you know like news, and then they have the radio division. Oh, so, um, okay. so yeah, so it's Algoa News. Uh, so it's sorry, it's Algoa Live it's on Algoa Facebook. Live. Um, and then it was also Herald, and then it was up it was um IOL, you know IOL News in mm, Cape Town, yeah. um, and then it was Opera News, um, and then it was also um I forgot this Islamic radio um that I also spoke on during that time I forgot the name of the radio station, okay. but it was also ETV. Um, ETV um, actually played the story. It was actually aired today on ETV. Mm. Also ETV. Um, yo, I forgot the others, man. <laughs> I forgot the others, but um, yeah. if someone is interested, they can basically go and search on Google and say, Bane Le Moi. Okay. And then they'll <laughs> find all of the yeah. publications um, wrote on the story there yeah, on Google. Yeah. So 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 you you that guy basically, <laughs> yeah. You you that guy. They they should just go to Google. They will find it. Yeah, bro. If they're interested, uh, if anyone is interested in reading the full story, yeah. Um, go there and you know read about the full story, and they will and they will get the story there. You know on Google. Uh, that's actually the, the 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 nice thing about Google is that yeah. 
Um, you know, when you do things and when you do good things, you know, they always stay there, you know, and um, they also remind you as a person, you know, who um, has been doing all of these things and as a person who's been, you know, hustling and working hard, you know, um, those things always, you know, are basically archived, you know, on the yeah. internet to remind you of where you're coming from, you know, and that um, no matter how difficult things get, you know, um, at least you are, you are far uh, way better off now, you know, than what you basically started as, you know, yeah. so that's a nice thing about Google and the internet, you know, oh yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and thank you for, for, for mentioning that um, about, about um, Google and the internet be, be archiving your, 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 you know, um, and I would, I would really like to get to that, you know, um what what are your thoughts on 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 social media basically and and creating content and stuff like that what 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 are your thoughts around that yeah so um for me i'm actually not a person who um likes social media you know i'm not the content and type of a person you know but mm -hmm. um for me i'm i'm that kind of a person that you know if I have to do something in order for me to get to where I want to get, then it stops being a matter of um, liking it or not liking it, but I have to do it because this thing is going to get me to where I want to go, you know? Yeah. So now in the line of uh, work that I do, you know, as a real estate agent, I always have to be on social media yeah. and I always have to be active, you know, on social media. So it's one of those things for me where, you know, I, I have to do it in order for me to get clients, you know, um, and for um, easy deliveries as well. I had to always, you know, post things on my page, you know, to engage, to engage customers, yeah. you know, also for brand awareness, you know. So I think um, social media is a very um, underrated tool, you know, for a lot of um, small businesses. You know, um, and I'm not talking about, you know, like normal people who actually use social media because yeah. I would like to believe that um, I am a seller, you know, okay. um, and I'm not a consumer, you know. Vusi um, says, you know, there's two people in the world, you know, there's sellers, you know, and they, you know, so I'm not a, a consumer. I'm always, you know, a seller. So I'm always transacting. You know, so I'm mainly talking about the perspective now of other sellers, which, you know, I would imagine that it's mostly people who watch this podcast, you know, people who yeah. want to become sellers and people who are sellers, you know, people are always producing things, people are always, you know, trying to hustle and trying to make money, yeah. you know, those are the sellers, you know, so I think that um, social media is a very underrated tool for us, you know, in a sense that, um, for example, um, in my current job as a real estate agent, I um, have to always be looking for clients who want to buy and sell their houses, you know. Yeah. So um, I could simply um, go on social media. In fact, I simply go on social media and then I post on a Facebook group somewhere, you know, um, I advertise my services and then I get a client who says, um, look, I am... Um, in Blue Water Bay, you know, and I want to sell uh, my house, you know, and that's how I get clients. And then I have to go to that client's house and view the house up until the house is sold, you know. So okay. imagine um, the house is like the selling price of the house, maybe let's say 1.5 million. Mm. And then from that 1.5 million, I'll get like a commission of around maybe 60 to 70,000 rand, you know, all from, you know, just posting posting on a group, you know, on Facebook, you know. So I did not have to, um, you know, pay, you know, for a single cent for me to get that client compared to if, you know, Facebook was not around, you know, and I had to do the same form of advertisement. I would have to go, you know, the traditional route of having to yeah. advertise. I would have to go, you know, to billboards and do radios and pay money there. You know, where now there is actually this tool where you can advertise for free and get money for free, you know, 
Um, so on Zoom, there's also, um, you know, now uh, Facebook paid ads, you know, which yeah. um, you can also use, you know, depending on uh, what works for you, basically, yeah. in the digital, you know, marketing space, you know. So, yeah, man, that's basically my thoughts around, um, um, yeah, um, advertising and the internet and all of that. Yeah. Yeah, that um that that was a great way of actually putting it, you know, um uh, because I I think oh also I, I think I did uh, also say this to you once, uh when mm -hmm. yeah when 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 you were starting with with the with, with your with your career in in the real estate space, mm -hmm. yeah I think I think yeah we, we did we did speak about this, um which which is that thank you for for actually bringing it up and explaining it the way that you did, uh, because. That that is something that most people don't actually realize, you know, with 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 mm -hmm. social media and the internet. First of all, it's it's just it's not just about um, making sure that you are out there, and you know. But at the end of the day, it's it's also something um, that you can leave for the people that will be for the next generation, basically, right? Some people don't look at it that way, but I do, right? Um, for yeah, instance. This that's true yeah. yeah because because now what, what happens is this um you 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 will of course we will all pass away right and yeah yeah and there will be generations and generations that will be coming after us right now those generations they will need to 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 know how what, what kind of a person was their grandfather and you know and when you are creating content on social media posting and doing all of that right that 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 is what your your grandchildren will be seeing of their grandfather right and and right. sometimes yeah and sometimes i actually tell that to 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 there's this client of mine uh she she was my client in in pe right i will be having her on on the podcast also i was actually telling her this that um what 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 social media what happens is this um if if you post bad things on social media, right, the, then those bad things are things that your children, first of all, will see, right? Your your grandchildren will see those things. Your great grandchildren mm -hmm. will, will, will be seeing those things. So, it's for 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 me, I would rather post things that I know that when my when my grandchildren, my grandchildren, my children, and stuff like that, when they see them, they will be like, you know, th th this this is yeah so that's how i actually look at it and then second of all with 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 social media um you did mention this that if there wasn't social media we would have to to put money into traditional um marketing right whereby we would have to put money into billboards money into 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 posters and and all of that right now with social media one post could could literally change the the whole trajectory of your business right with just one post and that post going viral you your business could act yeah your there's a lot that could happen with just that one post right now imagine if you are posting that for free right you don't have to pay any any money and stuff like that and there's a possibility that you might grow from that people might see you might have audience from that you know so it's it's something that is a that is amazing right but the, 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 oh, no. yeah sorry to disturb you yeah no um problem. so the other day uh, you know i was doing a presentation you know at work you know and i was um basically telling the other uh, my colleagues the other real estate agents you know that um I was making them an example and saying, look, um, the next thing about social media is that it, it, it has made marketing a level, like a level playing field, mm -hmm. you know? You can now play in the same um, playing ground that the big boys, you know, with big budgets play on. Yeah. You know? um, and saying that um, because now acquiring customers has become a game of you know who has the deepest pockets you know so in today's marketplace the person who has the deepest pockets acquires the customer 
mm. right? Because now um, the game is about is all about money, you know. If now you are watching oh, what's going on with Temu, you know, Temu is spending a lot of money, you know, spending yeah. a lot of money, you know, and um, that some competitors are not um, able to spend, you know, yeah, and um, um, Temu is now actually taking customers away from take a lot taking customers away from shane and all of that yeah all because they have a big budget you know yeah. so i was saying them to them the other day that if um if 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 facebook and social media was not around you would not be able to compete with um temu but now yeah. because uh we have facebook you can actually sell directly to the customers that Temo advertises to, mm. you know, because the filtering system is the same. If you know how Temo is filtering, you know, um, their ads, you can actually do the same and advertise to the same customers. And sometimes even free of charge, if you know how to use, um, you know, um, Facebook and how to, you know, target your customers and which yeah. groups, to do, you know, and look at um, how each, how, um, um, active each group is, you know, you can actually advertise to the same people because all those people are now on one platform, you know. Okay. So I was actually saying to them that look, it's a it's a very um level playing field now, you know, and um looking um basically you know bringing that example now to um our industry which is real estate, you know, yeah. I was saying um Remax is a big franchise a really big franchise so they have a big budget yeah. you know and i was then we can actually advertise directly to the same customers that remax advertises to because we are using the same platform that remax is also using it just becomes um now um um, um a question around strategy how do you um how do you um what strategy you know do you use to acquire your customers you know and what strategy do you use, you know, to 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 make yourself known, you know, on social mm. media and all of that? And above all of that, social media is also like, you know, a community. You know, it's yeah. a community of people. So, if if you want to be known for something in your community, then you have to position yourself, right? Yeah. So, um, for instance, in your community, like in the physical, you know, um. Place, places that we stay in, you know, we know that um, next door, maybe there's a police officer who stays yeah. there. And then we, 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 we also know that, um, you know, maybe five houses away from where we stay, there's a doctor there and there's a nurse there, you know. So all those people are playing their different roles within the community. So on social media, you can actually do the same, you know, and yeah. be known what you're specializing in because it's also a community. So um, the people that you have maybe on your fr on your on your on your on your on your friend list, you know, on social media, yeah. those people can, can have the exact same effect, you know, as your neighbor who is a policeman, um, in such an to such a way that you know when something happens in your community, right? Um, the first people that you 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 consult when yeah. something happens are the people who work in those roles in their daily lives you know so yeah. if the criminal act in your community who are you going to you're going to the police, the police next yeah. if um someone is sick you know and they need medication or you need medication advice you're going to the nurse right yeah or the doctor so, and stuff like that yeah exactly so if you position yourself well on facebook or any um or, or any social media platform you will be known for being, you know, um, um, you're the real estate agent, you know, yeah. um, so that when people want to buy or sell houses, they you have the exact same effect that the policemen and the nurses have. People yeah. are going to come to you, you know, for that assistance, you know. And the nice part about social media is that um, people have people that, you know, don't necessarily are not necessarily on your friends, you know, on social okay. media, but that those people are friends with, you know, offline. So yeah. now they can actually even take a conversation offline and say, look, um, if you want to sell your house or you want to buy a house, 
I know a friend on my Facebook who is actually who's doing this. Asian. Yeah. So that's a nice part. Yeah, many. And and you know, you just have a way of putting um you have a way of saying your words to a point where they they are what uh it's it's supposed to actually be. I don't know if you understand me. Yeah. I understand. <laughs> I think a lot, you know, actually a lot of people say, <laughs> you know, because most of the time, as an estate agent, I always have to be explaining, you know, things yeah. to people. So I like to use, you know, the easiest ways to explain to people. And actually, and people always, you know, compliment me on how um, on how easily I explain, yeah. you know, things, subjects, you know, even to all the people who don't understand these things. But I can yeah. actually say, you know, um, um, use, you know, local examples that they know to make them understand. So a lot of people like to compliment me on that as well. Yeah. And to a point where it's like, you know, most of the time when someone explains something to you, you, you can be like, okay, could, could you please try and explain what you meant by this and this and that? But now I'm at a point where I'm like, eh, ah, uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Uh, you you just have you just have that way of explaining to a point where it, it fully you know but and, and also thank you for explaining it the way that you did and and mm-hmm. also just just to get back to 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 you mentioned um temu right you know these guys i was i was actually um uh, now that you, you you spoke about that i was i was also shocked by seeing what these guys are doing you know the way that they they are actually moving you know it's it's just amazing because these guys First of all, the, 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 they are at budget. It's it's too much, first of all, right? It's too much. It's too much. You pocket. <laughs> and and, <laughs> and then second of and then second of all, these guys. Um, you know, with with, with um what you call this with, with Sheen and, and these other and in this yeah, what happens is that, is that um they normally take about 10, 15 days and all of that. But now with team with these guys, they take about um three to to even five days shipping, you know, which which is amazing because when that happens, one thing that is gonna happen is this: people when they see that, first of all, there's lower prices here, the shipping, it's it's you know, it's it's fast. Yeah. yeah now yeah now, these guys they actually have everything that they need. First of all, fast the their shipping is fast. Like Amazon, for instance, they are the, their shipping is fast. Um, they are at budget. It's it's huge, right? Because mm. uh, I I also work in 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 the in the in the ad um agency space. So I know when 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 an ad when the ad budget it's it's huge, man. You just it you know there's a lot that you're gonna be doing with that, and if even the um the loss you won't have a, a loss with with that ad budget that is huge man you know because the, there's a lot there's a lot of of split testing that will happen there right which which is something that is amazing when when i when i i saw there was a video that i was watching on on youtube and it's it's a documentary i don't i don't know if you do watch those kinds of documentaries where where they talk about those kinds of stuff um mm. yeah so i was watching that and i saw what these guys are doing and i was like eh hey, you know, because it's 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 really amazing, man, what these guys are doing, and and also um just to 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 get back to something that you were also saying um when you're explaining the part um where you need to position yourself in in a way whereby um if if a person is looking for this they know ways to find you you know and you were actually talking about even the real estate side uh I I think I did mention this also to you that mm. uh when you sh- you should uh yeah you should create a youtube channel right yeah i did um create mm. a youtube channel and then on that youtube channel you start crafting content whereby you answer questions that people are asking right mm. because people they do search right um people search on google people search on youtube you know those kinds of things now when you create content that answers the question that, that they that they are searching for you know you are able to make sure that you are well positioned on social media you know and and that is something that most people don't 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 
um don't get even i didn't get it right even though i was i was in the marketing space but that was something that i didn't really understand you know until i got to understand that how personal branding works you know so that that is also something that is is that is, that makes sure that you can be effective in positioning yourself you know so on that on that specific um part have have you been um posting that kind of content or at the moment are you are you, are you which which what what kind of strategies do you actually use in in terms of of your content okay yeah so um when it came to strategy mm. for me now the question was you know mm. um what kind of strategy do i use you know because mm. um as a real estate agent you know you don't have um you know organic content you don't always have organic content um so when i'm talking about um organic content i'm talking about you know your listings you know because mm. that's the major attraction for um your target audience right because yeah. they those are people who are looking to buy or sell their houses right so when I'm talking about organic content now, I'm talking about um, houses that people are looking to buy, you know, because yeah. um, that's the primary thing that you're going to be posting on your social media because you want people to buy, right? But now you have a limited source of those houses, you know. Say, for instance, uh, one real estate agency can have about maybe 25 listings, yeah. right? So that's a very limited number of listings because... Even if, let's say, you're going to post uh, one house a day for a month, you know, yeah. that's not even going to finish, you know, 30 days because yeah. only 25 houses. So now the question becomes, um, if you don't have more houses to post, then what do you do in the meantime to keep your whole audience engaged mm. so that they don't forget about you, you know? Yeah. Because the more you don't post, the more people forget about you, the more, the less relevant you are, right? Yeah. So um, back to the example that I made, you know, about being known in your local community where you stay, you know, as a policeman or as a nurse, right? Mm -hmm. So if you, you know, you no longer a nurse or you no longer a policeman, obviously people are going to stop consulting you with regards to those things, right? Because yeah. now you are a policeman. So people are going to go to the relevant, to the relevant people that they see going yeah. to work, you know, working in those things, you know. So it it has now the same effects that it, 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 it has the same effects also on your digital community, you know, in a sense mm. that when you don't post, um, people stop thinking about you and people stop consulting you you know, as a real estate agent or as a policeman, you know, because they no longer see you doing that anymore, you know. So now the question for me became, okay, so if I'm going to post content every day, then what kind of content am I going to be posting? So obviously the first thing that comes to mind is videos, you know, like most yeah. people do, you know, you post videos, you know, taking customers, sorry, taking your audience through, you know, house tours and all of that, you know, yeah. um, videos on TikTok, you know. So for me, um, the strategy that I found, you know, that was both suitable for me, mm -hmm. you know, and the local, the local audience, you know, in PE um, and generally the people that were also looking to buy and sell, you know, mm -hmm. was... I, I found that, you know, I could actually write blogs, you know, write yeah. blogs about local sites, and no one was doing that at the time. So I started writing blogs about Fairview, you know, I started writing blogs about, you know, Summer Strand, you know, um, comparing prices in those areas, you know. And I think um, the other blog, I actually showed you well, the other yeah. thing. I, I was about to say that I remember your your blog post. Yeah, uh, I showed you the numbers on that blog. Yeah. I think and and and, than... and before before I cut you off, man, you 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 are just one lucky guy. That that I have to 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 say, you know, <laughs> that, that I have to say because ah uh, ah, uh, you know because it was less 
Yeah, yeah, you can talk. <laughs> yeah, because when when I the first, I think it was twenty four hours later, right? When ah yeah yeah, yeah. I was like yeah oh, and then so, you know, so, so twenty four hours. No, it wasn't actually twenty four hours yet. It was about to be twenty four hours. I think I think it was like twenty hours. You know, mm. um, when I posted, you know that uh, piece of content and. Already, there was like um five hundred people who viewed that blog, you know. So there was like five hundred people who viewed that blog post, you know. Mm. Um, and obviously, you know, it was now starting to have that effect, you know, of yeah. being known, you know, in my Facebook community as a person who is into real estate and as a person who people could consult, you know, yeah. um, in the industry. And I actually started getting, you know, messages from other real estate agencies wanting me to go and work for them, you know, because of that content, yeah. you know, saying, uh, look, I, we saw your blog and we absolutely loved what you are doing and we are impressed, you know, can we have a copy? We want to speak to you, you know? So I remember, <laughs> yeah. I remember when you said that there, there was yeah. someone that wanted to, to have a coffee with you. Yeah. Were so they it was trying actually to poach more- you. Yeah, so it was actually more than one person, you know. Mm. But then, um, what I realized was that, you know, um, a lot of people here in PE, you know, um, don't actually like to. In fact, I wanted I wanted to 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 make it as I wanted to make it as convenient as possible to read. For people to read my content you know mm. so that's where now i started posting posting you know the blogs directly on facebook and not you know um on the blog post that i used to you know i used to use so i pivoted from now posting all of the content to the blog mm. um to now posting all of the content on my facebook page you know so that i can get engagement there you know rather than on the blog itself you know because when you get an engagement on the blog the people who are viewing your profile on facebook don't see that engagement you know and they uh, start to think that now there is nothing happening in terms of your engagement and all of that you know so i sort of wanted to take the conversation now on facebook you know i wanted to engage my audience there on facebook you know so i started posting the content on facebook you know so um now i started uh, moving away from writing about the suburbs, you know, mm-hmm. I started now writing about, you know, um, local business stories, you know, that I found interesting and that people didn't know. Yeah, yeah I started posting, you know, about, you know, how, uh, for instance, the, the Redison Blue Hotel yeah. came to PE, you know, and also on that specific um, cont- piece of content, I got a lot of engagement on that specific piece of content. You know, and I also got, um, you know, um, access to an audience that I never knew that I could get um, access to, you know. Yeah. So these now, so now we're starting to get um, access to uh, business executives, you know, um, CEOs, you know, mm-hmm. um, business directors, because they were interested in these stories that I was writing about, you know. Um, I started to write now about the top, you know, most successful business sorry entrepreneurs you know um in the eastern cape you know and i also got a lot of interest you know on that piece of content you know Mm. so from using that strategy um i gained a lot of momentum you know i gained a lot of momentum but um i have to say that it takes a lot of time because you have to research you do you have to you know do a, a proper research before posting each piece of content, you know, because you can be sued, number one, by people yeah. um, for posting wrong, you know, um, information about them or posting inaccurate information about them. So for me, I would always like, you know, steer away from posting negative things, although yeah. there are some negative things about local business people here in PE, but I would just choose not to write about those things. And then instead, like, look to write about the more positive things because I knew that if I, you know, um, stay away from writing negative things about people, then 
at least uh, I will stay away from getting sued, you know, and getting into trouble, you know, and also, you know, um, getting into conflicts with people that I did not, I don't, I don't know, you know, and people that, you know, I don't know what kind of things that they do. But at least I knew that if I post something positive about a person, you know, um, they not they won't really have a reason to sue you or anything because yeah. everyone wants you know um to be known for positive things so basically that's what I did you know um that's what I still do now you know I continuing with posting my real estate content so I would all I would also you know go around looking for um real estate developments around the city you know and then I would take pictures you know and then I would go inside the development. And I would be shown around and I would take pictures. Um, they would ask, you know, questions like, um, how many people are going to get employed after this project is completed? You know, okay. um, who is funding this project? Who is financing this project? You know, and then I would note all of those things down and then get home and then um, write articles, mm. uh, write an article about that development, you know. And then I found that, you know, a lot of people liked, you know, that type of content and shared that type of content, you mm. know. So um, that was basically my strategy. And a lot of people actually on Facebook started to tell me that, um, look, you need to um, also write this content on Twitter. Mm. You know, a lot of people on Twitter would like this kind of content, you know. So I, mm. but I, I also really enjoyed that type of content, you know, because there's a lot of, I think, um, insider information that I know that a lot of people don't oh, know. Do. You know? Um, so I, I always like to share those kinds of things. For instance, the Redison Blue story, a lot of people see, you know, the Redison Blue Hotel, but yeah. they don't necessarily know what, you know, how it came to Redison Blue Hotel, how it came to, to, to Summer Strand, you know. Okay. A lot of people see the buildings, you know, um, here in 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 Kiki, you know, when you go to town, for instance, there's a lot of buildings there. Yeah. But a lot of people don't know the stories behind those buildings. Who owns those buildings? And uh, what does that person do for a living? You know, yeah. how much is the valuation of all those buildings? So I basically go into the details, you know, around um who owns the buildings, how much do they buy the buildings for, where do they buy the buildings, you know. So yeah. I would post, you know, things like that that are, are, are interesting, but at the same time also thought-provoking, you know, um, yeah. the, types of, the, ty the types of things that, you know, would make people excited to tell their colleagues about what they read, you know, the following day after they've read the story, you know. So, yeah, that's basically uh, my strategy and how I, 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 I promote myself on, on social media. Yeah. And 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 the, and that's that's a very smart um strategy that you actually got, because you know you, you I've been seeing your content also. I I, I remember you you was oh, you did send it to me, and I also see it on 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 your, on on your Facebook page, right? But now my my question is this, um, have, I I'm asking you I, I think for the second time, um, have 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 you thought of moving, um your content to youtube i won't lie i won't lie um the reason why i i have not yet um been in fact i have been active on facebook but um not as intense as i am on yes. facebook in fact um, the type of content that I, the type of content that i was posting on youtube was not necessarily the stories, but you know, um, um, house um, show houses, you know, mm -hmm. taking um, people through, you know, inside um, house tours, you know, when we do um, house tours, you know, inside houses, and that's the type of content that I was posting on YouTube. But I think I all I only posted about two or three videos on mm -hmm. YouTube. So, um, so I I'm not that active on 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 youtube but um it's definitely something that um i know that um sooner or later i have to do you know in yeah. fact um the sooner i do it then the better you know so yeah. that's that that's that's where i stand with um youtube oh because you know i, I think yeah i think i've been also asking you this you i, I I've, I've been saying that 
you need to get um yourself on on YouTube. You need to get yourself on YouTube. You know, uh, but I didn't know that you have uh, you, you had a YouTube channel. Yeah, I do have. I do have. It's like I think it has like three videos there already. Mm. I think the one, um, the one um YouTube short um video that I posted there. I think I got like um five thousand something views there. Mm. Yeah. So, um, but to be honest, I've 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 never. I've never liked videos, you know. Um, so that for me is, you know, the thing that you know I think makes me slack mm. when it comes to YouTube. But I know that you know, again, it's not necessarily about me um, liking or not liking yeah. something. I have to do it at the end of the day because we are competing in a marketplace, you know. Um, mm. So when you're competing with other people. You have to do what your competitors are doing, you know. Um, if you're not gonna do it better than them, you know. So yeah, yeah. Cause, cause, cause I, I also did mention to you that in South Africa, um, especially in the real estate side, what most people focus on, it is the house tours, right? It is, it is, it is. Yeah, it's more. It's, it's the house tours more than anything. If, if we were to, to also go on on youtube i think I've, I've mentioned that um that if you go there you will see that there is um oh and also I've, i i see that the, the hour has passed you don't mind if we continue yeah oh, no it's fine. it's fine okay okay no problem so um yeah if you if you go to 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 youtube and check for for real estate people in south africa what you'll see is they post normally um content that is related to house tours and stuff like that. But as much as that is effective and that brings in the views, right? Um, but what 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 makes um people um first of all loyal to you and build a brand around your 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 your, your you know um it's 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 when you provide value to people and and how do you provide value to people um let's say someone is trying to to find out um what 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 goes on when you are when you are creating or when you are trying to sell your house right and now you answer those kinds of questions right i i th i did mention this to you right No, no, no. We, we. I don't think we've ever spoken about that one. Oh, ah. Uh, now I think I'll be sharing it now. Um. Yeah. So, with with that, when 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 you answer those kinds of questions, because if you if you can go to to Google Trends, right, you can just search for Google Trends on yeah, and then search for things. Let's say you search for real estate, right. And you will see there what people or you, you search for real estate, just type real estate, and then you will see what people are searching in terms of real estate. And then for houses or stuff like that, just just type in whatever industry that you are in, just to see what people are actually looking for, right? And when you do that, and then you answer those questions that people are searching for, what happens in return? People they they you provide them with value, right? And when you provide people with value they they see the, the the need for them to 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 assist you in some in some in some type of way right and of which that's how you build a, a brand behind yourself and from what i've seen because the real estate side it was a, a industry that i wanted to to get into in terms of the marketing side right yeah but 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 i i just didn't i just got into into the home improvement side right but what i learned from that is that most people or most real estate companies they don't focus on on that specific side you know and and also i was i was I, going to 100 percent, yeah yeah they, they don't focus on that because in 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 their minds right um don't get me wrong you're also in the real estate side so mm. yeah so the the what 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 they normally focus on right it's it's the house tours showing people the properties right and now when when you show people the 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 properties and stuff like that 
what what you're trying to accomplish with that it's you are selling people a dream basically right and mm. when you're selling people a dream those people when they see that property they they're going to be at a point where hey i want that house right and with that kind of content as much as people that watch it might buy from that video right but the whole point of doing a house tour right it is to 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 showcase the property first of all right so that if someone is looking for the house they can be able to see it and and you can correct me if i'm wrong on this on this right and then the yeah. second yeah and then the second part of creating a, a house tour it is to sell a dream to 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 even the people that don't ha even have the money right but when when those mm. people see the property right they they, yeah. they they get interested in that and and at, and what you also get from that you get views you get likes you get subscribers because, because people see the properties that you post right mm. yeah now i don't i don't know if uh, if maybe i'm wrong but i'm just saying that from from the way that i've noticed it right but but now if if you were to 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 then get to the side where you're providing the value right when you provide like for instance you did mention that you were creating content on on the reticent blue hotel and stuff like that mm -hmm. and people were, 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 were you were getting um good responses from that and people were asking you to to, to create more content right mm -hmm. yeah because you were providing value to them because they didn't know anything about the property as you've mentioned they don't know anything mm. about that property, but when you give them value, now they know that the, they know the story behind the Reddit selfie because I even didn't know that the, the you know, and there was and there was uh this this place that you made a content around, it's 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 um when you you see yeah when you're going to, Guandu Towers. Sorry. Guandu Towers is it Guandu Towers? Yeah, Guandu Towers. I, I used yeah. to post there, you know, when, when I was going, when I was heading to, to, to the, what you call these places, the, the, the res, right? I, I, I used to go to, to, to those reses a lot, you know, for, yeah, <laughs> it's one of those things, you know, so I, I, I used never, to, I never knew the story around the building. Yeah, I didn't know the story around the building, but I used to see this building a lot and I didn't even know what, what was happening there. Because I normally see a lot of securities that work around there, but I, I don't know what's happening with it. And you mm -hmm. gave me value there, right? Mm -hmm. And of which now you got me as a as a, as a loyal follower, right? Because mm -hmm. now I know a lot of I know what 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 that that place is about and all of that and the story behind it, you know. Mm -hmm. So you provided value, and in return, I am a loyal subscriber. I am a loyal subscriber, loyal follower when you when when you even sell me when you monetize right mm. it will be easy for you for for me to buy from you because i've yeah been, yeah you've been providing value to me a lot and when i need mm. to, to to convert that into into money into monetizing mm. it it will be easier for for you for people to buy into yeah it. you know so that that is one thing that i've i've noticed you know and mm -hmm. and you you said that we didn't really get to to talk about it, but now I'm actually mentioning it. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So so that 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 is something that I I, I noticed in terms of of the real estate side. Most people mm -hmm. they, they they don't um prov provide value. They just showcase. Yeah, that's true. That's you know. True. Yeah. And 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 that is something that I I hope. Actually, it's something that you have been doing, you know. Yeah. You've you've been doing it, and then you've been doing it very well. But I'm just hoping now you you will get um to a point where you will be doing that on on YouTube, you know. Yeah, and you actually giving me an idea now to basically, um, um, to basically take those stories, you know, and then create them in a video form. You know, exactly. Uh, um, basically, you know, take for instance the Redison Blue Hotel story. Mm. You know, take the same story, turn it into maybe a three or four minutes video, video. you know, about how it became, you know, yeah. how it came about and how it came, you know. Yeah. Uh, so you basically give me an idea that <laughs> you know and that's actually and that's actually the nice thing about content. 
it's actually a very fascinating thing that you can actually take one piece of content mm. and split it up into so many different forms, you know, for so many different platforms, you know. Yeah. You can take the same piece of content and then split it up into a different uh, form for Instagram, mm. use the same thing, split it into a different form for TikTok, use the same thing, different form for YouTube. Yeah. Because I, I, I wrote another story about another guy called um, um, Anda Makanda. So I also wrote a story about him. Mm. So he was actually um, 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 a budding entrepreneur, you know, uh, one of the uh, budding entrepreneurs from here, you know, in, in PE, you know, and he had um, head offices, you know, for... Um, his engineering company, you know, they had a lot of divisions and he was mm. hiring, you know, and then he was killed, you know, in a tragic incident um, in Christmas, you know, I forgot the year, um, mm. but he got involved in a fight, you know, and then he was basically stabbed, you know, and they killed him, you know. Okay. So I wrote a story about that, you know, and it also had a lot of engagements of, on Facebook, mm. you know, and then I decided that um, um, I would basically take that same story and then mm. uh, basically screenshot the story on on Facebook oh. and then um, take the take the screenshots, you know, mm. edit them and then put them on TikTok, you know, as like pictures and then mm. put um, you know an emotional song, you know, around because it was an emotional story, yeah. you know. So that's yeah. what I did, you know, and. Um, a lot of people, you know, engaged with that um, content, you know, they yeah. commented, you know, and it actually also, I, I also got a lot of views um, from that video as well. So it's actually like um, um, digital real estate, you know, because mm. I produced that piece of content in like it was, I think it was last year around um, um, October, okay. but I'm still thinking engagement even now to this From point that one video. when I've, I've 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 stopped producing that piece of content a long mm. time ago but i'm still getting you know value from it even though um i created it a long time ago so it's actually like digital real estate you know it creates yeah. value if you no longer creating the content anymore and then it actually becomes you know um, compound it, it actually compounds itself when you create more and more and more and more and more because imagine um, if uh, let's say I created the same pieces of content for like um, each month the whole of last year you yeah know, I would be getting now um, value from a piece of content from January 2023 I'm getting that piece of content now in April 2024 you know mm. so uh, it's like it's like it's like um um it's like real estate basically you know yeah, on exactly. the internet. just create it and leave it there yeah and then it it it, it, it creates more value over yeah. time and it creates more value for you as a person but um I, what i found is that um the same the same effect you know actually happens when you stop producing because when you stop producing people stop engaging you know so um yeah that's what i found you know and, and it's a very interesting thing about um content you know content creation yeah. and what i've actually found is that it's, it's it's actually science that because i used to think like hey it's very difficult to you know to get people to engage your content but now since i've started doing it i've found that it's actually um it's actually a science you know, you basically, it's basically supply and demand. You look at what uh, is in demand and then you yeah, supply it. You supply like the example it. that I made, I realized that, you know, um, content that is emotional is in demand on TikTok. Yeah. And then I a piece of content, you know, and then I chopped and changed it um, so that it can be suitable for TikTok. And then I posted it on TikTok. And then, you know, it, I got a lot of engagement yeah. from it and I got a lot of value from it, you know. So yeah, it's, 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 it's actually very interesting. It's a very mm. uh, interesting thing, you know, but yeah.
and 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 that's the best part about about having content you know um that that's really the best part about it because as much as much as uh, um when when we were, we, were, we were talking uh, i said that when you're creating content you are leaving behind uh, and uh, uh something that the next generation can look at and and you also said that you 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 having an archive of of you know so with with all of that being said that goes to to, to show that creating content it's 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 especially if you're creating content that is giving away value you know it's 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 something that will not only change the lives of the people that watch that content but also your life you know because that's true yeah so so i think when you you should create that content you know and how mm. you and how you you structure it you can structure it this way right you i don't know if your your thoughts around podcasts and stuff and stuff like that you know but you know what 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 i what i did um was this you know with 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 sp media empire right the 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 the, the company um i created a youtube channel right i created a podcast i created um pages right now the the whole structure how it actually works is this the the youtube channel right finals um when i create content on the youtube channel right the content that is created on the youtube channel it they, I, I then turn it into into a podcast right taking the audio right and then taking that audio i i i, I create a, 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 a an episode on the podcast right and then the the content that uh, I'm, I'm supposed to to, to do also written content but at this point um, um, um I, that is something that, that I, I cannot handle at this point but yeah 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 but now what i can what 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 i then do with the content on on youtube i chop it up right and i make videos of of a specific if if maybe let's say i was making a specific point you know i take that that those, those content i post them on my social media pages right and that way i get more views right and more people they watch it and i provide value to to other people so that is a way that you would need to stru- you could structure it you know and especially the, the the value that you you are creating with with your with your pages right with with your content you know if you were to structure it that way it i i'm promising you it would make a lot of difference maybe it, it wouldn't in 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 let's say in a week or in a month but if right, you would yeah. Yeah, but if you were to 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 keep on being consistent with it, I, I'm sure you would see the difference in it in in that, right? But it's 100%. something, yeah. But it's something that you need to try out, man. You know, yeah. it's something that you need to try out. Oh, I, I will, I will, I will, I will definitely be trying it out. I will be, I will be definitely be trying it out because, you know, one thing I I I've also you know realized is that, um. When people, when when your content now starts being, you know, um, something you know to talk about when people go to work, you know, and say, um, have you seen, you know, yeah. oh, um, that article about, you know, this and that, you know, then you know that you know, um, you are doing something right, you know, because yeah. people are starting to market the content for you, you know, yeah, and. There was actually another lady. Um, and the nice thing is that you can actually even start monetizing the content itself, you know. Um, there was also another lady. Um, I forgot, I forgot the lady's name now, but um, she basically owns a law firm, okay. right? So she was also one of the target audience that I started tapping to now uh, when I started writing this piece of content. Because she's a business person and she's interested in business, you know, stories, okay. you know, and she approached me, she said, um, you know, uh, it would actually be nice if you would create like, um, 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 you know, a, a magazine sort of thing, you know, mm. or, you know, you know, something that you could basically put all of these, or a book, you know, something that you could put all of these stories into, you know, and then package them, you know, like, um you know and put maybe you know a catchy heading you know like mm. um 
um, maybe 50 most interesting stories about businesses in Nelson Mandela Bay, you know, mm. something catches like that, you know, and that's what she said to me. And I was like, okay, maybe this is also a good idea, you know. I have an idea because, for you. Because, okay, um, <laughs> because you know, um, while it's also, it's also a niche target mm. market that I'm targeting, yeah. but it's also a high paying one. Because yeah. Um, guaranteed, these people are in business. They have money. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that I'm gonna sell this uh, whatever book or magazine for like 150, 150 rand. They definitely mm, gonna buy. They're gonna buy it. They know the value of this thing as compared to creating, you know, content and targeting it to people who, when I have to sell something, they say, you know, I don't have money. You know, it's too much. There's, yeah. Yeah, there's actually people like that, you know, who create content for a target audience that doesn't have money, you know. Mm. And when they start selling things, the same people that, you know, were watching and commenting, they don't buy, you know, because they don't exactly. have money. Exactly. What's the point? <laughs> because exactly. you're not making money out of that content anyway. You're just I... maybe a comedian on the internet, but you're not really monetizing because yeah. your target audience doesn't have the money. Uh, as compared to, as compared to um, um, having a niche market mm. of, let's say, a thousand or 500 people. But when you sell to those people, they go all out, you know, and say, yeah. you know, um, where's your banking details? I want to buy, you know. That's way more than having, you know, a target audience of 5,000 people that don't buy anything from you, you know, mm. rather than having 1,000 people that, Whenever you sell something, you sell out because they have the ability yeah, to buy. Yeah, to, to purchase you know? it. So yeah. that for me became a different story now when, uh, you know, people started wanting me to to even sell the content itself, you know, mm. because that's the kind of value that it carried, you know. Um, so, yeah, man. Yeah. And, and also, uh, I said that I have an idea for you, Fred. So, <laughs> yeah. Now... Me, bro, give me the idea. Yeah, I love now idea. she I love she she she's responsible for 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 this idea, but she she doesn't even know, right? Um, you know, there's there's this. I I don't know if you noticed on my story, right, or my status. I I did post that I am creating a free course, right? Hmm. And this course that I'm creating, I'm creating it for business owners, right? I don't know if you did see that. Mm. did you see it right yeah yeah i saw it yeah now with that that there's something uh that is bigger than you think right and, and it's it's way huge you know and yeah now just to to, to get to it right it, it it of course it 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 wouldn't be the course right mm. um but what you could do 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 you know um uh, do do you have any knowledge about the the newsletter business? Oh yeah, newsletter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do do you have knowledge about 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 it? Yeah, I do have. Yeah, I do know. Um, you basically you know collect emails mm. from people, you know, and then um depending on the model of um your newsletter, you basically charge the people you know a subscription fee. Yeah. every month or uh, the newsletter that you're going to be sending to them mm. or it can also be free you know depending on you yeah so yeah yeah, that's what... yeah. so 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 yeah so so now um look at it this way right um as i've mentioned to you there is a free course that i'm creating right and now the sp media brand right on its own that that's where the content that the content that I create will be funneling out to that free course, right? And on that free course, there is a course, there's a free community there for, for business owners. There is there is a course, of course, a school there, right? Now, mm -hmm. what you could do, create the content that you are creating, right? Now, with the content that you are creating, you funnel those people through to the newsletter, right? Now, on that mm -hmm. newsletter, let's say you charge them about 150 
even if you could charge them about 500 or even a thousand because i'm also looking into creating a newsletter but i would rather create a newsletter a newsletter with with the, the relevant people Let, let's say if i were to get the, the let's say a co- copywriting team uh blog you know then I, I i would definitely go into it because i don't have the time but yeah. i'm just sharing the idea right you you funnel them, right? Let's say you create you see, you create the content, you create the YouTube channel, you all of that the content, right? And what happens is you there's a link that you'll be leaving. And and during your content, you mentioned that you have a newsletter, right? And mm-hmm. in this newsletter, this is this and this and this is is inside that newsletter, right? And when they join that newsletter they will have access to other business owners, right? And now what you will be selling, first of all, it is the content, right, that will mm. be in, in that newsletter. Like, for instance, how can you monetize the newsletter? It, you, may, you may charge them. Let's say, let's say you charge them 500 or 1,000 or even more than that. It just depends on, on you, basically, right? And now you can create content inside that newsletter, right? And when you're creating content, also what you do is this. You take referral, um, what you call this, the affiliate marketing, right? You do affiliate marketing inside the newsletter, right? You, you suggest to them, let's say, um, if a month you're creating about four, 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 four content, right? Mm. Inside the newsletter. In what? every in 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 all those four um four 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 content one out of uh, out of four right you, that's where you will be suggesting uh what what you call this let's say a specific software a specific product you know the, that kind of a thing right to mm-hmm. so a point where when they go and and purchase that specific thing you also get a commission from that you know so mm-hmm. if if you were to to do it that day, because the idea that she came up with the the, the lawyer right it, it's good but that is what it needs right if you were to create a newsletter whereby um business owners could have access to to each other right and 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 the content also that is inside it right because you're giving them a community first of all and it may be let's say the elite of 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 mm-hmm. because I, I think i think you you know a few people inside the the the, the business chamber in 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 pe right yeah yeah i know quite a few people exactly there. exactly you know now you could you could utilize those people just tell them that um this is this this is what you are doing right let's say for them you could you could you could say that for for a month right you will be creating free co- that they will be joining for free for 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 a month right or, or let's say you say for 14 days they will be joining they will be inside the core that they will, i mean i'm saying the course now the what you call this the newsletter right and then they will see how everything is is going right the 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 response and, and stuff like that right now when they are inside the 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 newsletter right you can also tell them that there will be other business owners that will be joining this right now when you have these people that are in the business chamber because remember uh, the, the business chamber as it's it, it consists of business owners right and these business owners when other business owners hear that there are these kinds of people inside this they will of course want to join it because they know that they and you know one thing about business owners is especially the ones that can afford something they understand the the, the value of yeah, being ar- yeah. yeah the value of being around a community that does that 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 is at that specific place place that they need to get to or the mindset that they need you know so they wouldn't mind paying that money if it meant that that money would get them closer to this specific person that is actually something that that oh you were gonna say no i'm saying definitely yeah because if even the, the the charities i don't know if you noticed that um what what charities um that is actually something that happens um, let's say this specific person um, donates this specific amount into a specific charity. That person knows that inside that 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 organization, this person 
also donates to it. So I'm getting a seat. I'm getting to the to to a seat with this specific person. So this fifty thousand rand, it's 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 smaller than, to you know, so mm. that is that is something that you could do. I don't know if your your thoughts around it, but uh, it's just a suggestion that I'm thinking of also. Yeah, correct. No, I I I I hundred percent agree. Mm. I hundred percent agree. I hundred percent agree. You know, but with these things, you you have to be very. You have to be very proactive. In fact, that's what I learned, you know, because um, there's a lot of things, you know, going on. And um, I think the perfect way you have to put it is it's a chaos, basically. You yeah. Know? You basically have to be now um, because already um, on this podcast, there's a lot of um, things that we mentioned, you know, YouTube, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, um, the written content, yeah. um, the news article, and also selling houses at the same time. So it's basically a chaos, you know. You have to be yeah, proactive, exactly. you know, exactly. in trying to be doing all of these things at the same time. Mm. And you cannot also make the excuse that you do not have time. Time to do, yeah. Um, you you cannot make the excuse that you don't have time. You just want. Um, maybe you know you're just not organized. Not necessarily that you don't have time, but you're just not really organized. You know because really, um, you will find that you know like we discussed, maybe there's a lot of money that I'm leaving on the table. You know with some of the things that I'm not currently doing, that I can be doing. You know, but like I said, um, all of these things need a lot of time because. I think one just writing one piece of content alone, I need to do about four to five hours of research. Yeah. So yeah. That that's that's one thing on its own. And then for YouTube, I'm also gonna need to edit the video, which I can also mm. do. I'm gonna need to do the editing and you know, um also create the thumbnail for YouTube, mm. you know. <laughs> so <laughs> It's a lot. It's just a lot, there. but it's doable. It's doable. Yeah. Yeah. If if you just you know put your mind into it, then you can do it because yeah, I mean, you can accomplish uh, it. there's there's uh, there's people like Elon Musk who alone runs seven companies at the same time. Exactly. <laughs> who are we? <laughs> who are we? <laughs> who are we? Ex- <laughs> exactly, man. Exactly. Who are we? Yeah, exactly. But but as 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 I as I've mentioned to you, you know, also on on my side, it's it's something th- those kinds of things are, are things that I would need to do, and I would need to get people that would um help me with them, right? Because due to the time, right, and 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 as you've said right now, it's not that the time is not there. The time is there, right? Mm-hmm. But at the very same time, the moment um we you, you were to you are to 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 add a lot of things into in, in, into one thing right there's there's a lot there's a lot of chaos that is going to happen there right so I, I fully understand what you are saying by that but it's something that is doable at the end of the day right ah, definitely yeah definitely yeah it's doable it's yeah. doable i mean um at the end of the day you know um in the marketplace you have to do what you have to do you know to stay competitive yeah if it means that you have to you know um be writing this piece of content if you have to wake up at 4 a.m in the morning yeah wake up at 4 a.m in the, if you have to you know cut down on your sleep you know in order for you to squeeze now this extra time in if you're sleeping eight hours then sleep six hours you know because if you want to be relevant in the marketplace, that's what you have to do, you know. Unless you don't want to play, you don't want to play the game anymore, then you can just give it up to your competitors. But because, you know, that's what the market requires now. You know, it requires you to to bend your back and hurt mm-hmm. your back. You know? But it's all it's 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 the name of the game, you know, yeah. it's the name of the game. And um at the end of the day, it's all a game, basically, that we basically as sellers love to play, you know, yeah. we love to play the game of transacting, you know, testing different things, you know, um, getting engaged. What... 
So that's the thing I've also, I've, I've never been a person who likes content, but I became fascinated now with, you know, um, how you can basically, you know, create value out of nothing, out of thin air, you know. So that's what fascinated me, you know, um, like taking um, stuff that was basically on the internet, just lying around. No one was, you know, uh, cared about that. Mm. Taking that, you know, doing proper research, you know, um, putting that into one thing and then creating value out of it, out of thin yeah. air. All of a sudden, it's working for you, you know. Yeah. So um, um, that's basically, you know, if that's what it takes to compete in the modern day marketplace, then so be it. That's what so you need it. to do, man. You know. So be it. Yeah. Because it's 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 as as you've mentioned it, you know, it's it's it is the way that you you you've said right now. You know, if 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 you aren't willing to 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 be different from your competition, right, then mm -hmm. you you might just um you might just kiss goodbye to to whatever that you are doing. Because if you are if you're doing the same thing that your competition is doing then you will be at that very same place that your competition is in. And you might be even, um, they might be even at the top and you might just remain at the bottom, you know. You need to okay. differentiate yourself from your competition, you know. Um, mm -hmm. just, 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 just to make an example of, of that, when, when I got into, into the industry, right, uh, what, 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 what most companies were doing, right, even right now they're still doing that, um, in terms of the ad side, they they run the ads for the companies, right? And then when they get the leads, they give them to the companies, right? Now, that is what they used to do, right? What did I do, right? That differentiated myself from a competition was that I learned that when you do that, first of all, your 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 clients, right? Those guys aren't, aren't good with sales, right? You need to understand that, you know. And second of all, these guys, um, they might not be able to close the people that you bring to them, right? And when that happens, these guys will complain. The job, they won't be happy. They won't be happy with it, right? So what if I took, you know, that, that was one thing that I had in my mind. What if, I just took all of the systems and put them in house. You know, we close them for the for for our for for our leads for for our clients. We close those leads ourselves. We just give them the jobs. They are happy at the end of the day because the money that they put in, it's bringing in a return on investment. You know, so it's just a matter of knowing, of of looking at the marketplace, see from what your competition is doing what they are doing is it providing value and in which way and if it's not try to find a way that would make sure that you provide the value as much as possible and you are able to be differentiated for, from your from your competition you know 100 percent, yeah yeah i agree yeah but you know uh, i'm looking at the at, at the time right and, and it's almost two hours you know uh so <sighs> So I I think I think we, we we will just have to try and 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 shorten it up a bit, you know. So, um, at at this specific point, um, Banele, where do you actually see yourself going? Yeah. So um, right now I think for me the I think for me the goal has always been, you know, the same, but it's just you know the 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 way to get to the goal that's been changing you know like I told you how I you know was um doing coffee you know to um you know selling coffee in summer strand to all of these different things you know it's basically just me trying to get where you know I wanted to go you know by taking different routes you know even now I'm busy with other projects that maybe you're also gonna see on WhatsApp you know it's you know so for me uh the ultimate way where i basically see myself is um first of all i i i've always been a person who's um 
wanting to um, uplift, you know, um, local communities, you know, by creating value, you know. I think uh, one thing that has been um, constant for me, you know, or one thing that has been common in my story is that I've always been a person who creates value, you yeah. know. Um, I've always been a person who um, create um, things that um, people want to use, you know, and um, 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 services that people want to also use, you know. Yeah. So um, I guess then that has showed me, you know, that basically this is my purpose in life, you know, because... Yeah. And that's actually a very easy thing for me to do, you know, to create value. You know, I can actually look at something and then, you know, um, I can actually look at a problem and then start seeing ways in uh, which I can basically solve that problem. Mm. So um, all of that is basically my journey going to the end goal, you know, um, the end dream of being this person who um, can uplift my communities, you know, with okay. my skills, you know, um, but also in a way that is also um, going to be benefiting me at the end of the day, you know, mm. um, in, you know, a way that I can also be um, financially free, you know, I can you know, be my own boss, you yeah. know, um, um, and do things that I want to do at my own time you know, and not have, you know, someone telling me that I need to do this and I need to do that, you know. So for me, that's basically uh, what I've always wanted to, 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 to do, you know, to have um, financial freedom, you know. And for me, that's, a, that's the end goal, you know. Okay. Um, if it means that I have to uh, make um, 50 million rand a year, then, mm. you know, that's what it is, you know. Yeah. And that's where I have to go. That's where I'm heading, you know, because that's what it means, you know. Yeah. So for me, the ultimate goal is to have financial freedom. And how do you have financial freedom? You have to create value, you know. Um, what happens when you create value? People give you money, you know. Yeah. So um, so um, a lot of people have also been giving me money, you know, along the years, mm. you know. And that also affirmed, you know, um, 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 that I am basically a value creator, you know, and that yeah. um, um, this, even in tough times, you know, I would remember, uh, uh, you know, with easy deliveries, I will tell you a story. There was actually um, a family member, okay. right? Not a family member. <laughs> okay, I guess a family member in a way, but sure. she was, she, she, she was my ex-girlfriend's mom, mm. right? She was my ex-girlfriend's mom. So um, she knew that I was running this business, you know? mm. and then she believed in me, you know, and she believed in the business, you know. Um, I did not do anything that made her believe in what I was doing, you know. I did not sell her anything, no. but this saw the way in which I was operating this business, you know. I had no. apps you know, um, to do the admin work for the business, you know. Okay. You know, the way that I was speaking about it, you know, she, she saw that I was speaking about something that um, I knew and something that I was passionate about. Passionate about. about. So at, at, at one point, she said, um, look, Manele, I want to invest in this business, you know, and I said, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I said, no, 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 you, I, I like, I'm mm -hmm. not going to take money, you know, because I did not want any, you know, um, any handouts. Yeah, I did not want any transactions between me and her because I know that you can have a good relationship with someone, but immediately when you start engaging in transactions, mm. and then it will basically ruin the relationship because. Yeah. You know. So um, she actually insisted that, Manele, I want to invest in you. Mm. Like, I'm not going to take no for an answer, you know. And, Seeing your passion um, for it. Yeah, so she gave me 10,000 rand just to invest in the business. You know, mm. she sent 10,000 rand into my account and she invested into the business. And, you know, I bought even more scooters with the money that she, she gave me, you know. Mm. And I also won competitions through the business that you know of. Yeah. You know, 
and there's a lot of other people that also gave me money you know so yeah. for me um if there is one thing that is for sure you know it's that i have the ability to create value yeah. you know i have the ability to create you know something where there was nothing basically you know and i have the ability to 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 make people believe in that value and believe um you know in that vision you know so yeah. uh, even in tough times that's what basically keeps me going you know to think that you know a person would just want to give you 10000 rand out of the blue out of you the know blue. and so many other people you know um i remember um uh, during the Allen Gray competition that we had you know mm. um when i pitched my business there you know so during the competition they had like um like a fake 1 million rand that they would give to um everyone who attended the event okay. so at the event there was like 1000 people who were seated attending mm. the event so everyone had like a fake 1 million rand million. you know in their account you know so uh what the judges said is that you know um so everyone with their 1 million rand they needed to basically invest that fake 1 million rand into a person oh. that they believed in you know mm. so um uh, when so obviously as we are pitching people are looking at uh, people that they were they're going to invest their 1 million rands in yeah. right so a lot of people actually came to me you know and told me that hey you better win this competition because you want my 1 million rand is on you bro. Mm. <laughs> you know and there was yeah. like and there was like 18 of us finalists you know okay. so for people to come to me and tell me that you look if i actually had if this 1 million rand was real you know i would actually give it to you because i believe so much in what you are doing and the value mm -hmm. that you have created you know so for me those are the kinds of things that you know reaffirm you know that this is where i need to be you know i don't need mm. to be anywhere else. even when it gets tough you know i'm like no you stay here you know because where this you is way be. um you know um look back look at the time where um you were in in summer strand you know mm. um i'm selling coffee in your in your in your in your stand you know look at what happened there you know you ended up you know being on news publications you know you ended up touching the lives of people who were far cape town yeah. jober you know? uh, people just sending me money you know um so even there i created value out of nothing you know yeah. up to where i am now still creating value out of nothing out of you nothing. know uh, because of time i'd be telling you some of the projects that i'm doing now you know um, i think last week, Last week I was at um uh, I was at I was at um Atul you know Atul like this um uh, it's a is this company that basically owns tuk tuks you know tuk tuks tuk tuks uh, yeah no man it's those three wheeled things that they use in India to travel oh okay okay yeah those those scooters that they use mm. in India yeah so they have a branch here in in PE now they have okay. a branch here in PE now. So the directors of that company heard that I was running, you know, um, 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 a food delivery, delivery business. Delivery. I actually yeah. had my own apps, you okay. know, uh, my own websites and all of that, you know. So um, they are running this business and, you know, they don't have their own, you know, apps like Uber for people to request. Oh, okay. So people are buying these tuk-tuks from them, you know, and... Um, the people that are buying these tuk-tuks are using these tuk-tuks to know to 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 so that people can travel with them you know uh, okay. people can push rides but they don't have actually they don't actually have apps so it's very difficult to request mm. for someone to have a ride in one of them you need to pick up your phone and call them and all of that you know okay. and that comes with a lot of challenges imagine if every time you had to request an uber you have to call you know, mm. call center. So that's very difficult for the customer. Okay. So they found out and they called me, you know, they wanted me to have a meeting with them, you know, mm. and um, see how we can basically work together and all of that, you know. Yeah. So again, um, that's me basically creating value out of, out of nothing. Yeah. 
yeah, creating value that was where, where there was nothing to a point where um directors of you know um such you know a Those big companies, company, yeah, yeah, are calling me to have a meeting with them, you know, and um advise them and tell them, you know, about my story and how I did it and no. how I can basically work with them, you know. So yeah, man. Ah, uh, that's good to hear, man. That's good to hear. You know, the the, the only project that I that I I saw, um, was the I, I think you 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 own a a company that 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 is into IT solutions. Yeah, yeah, Code Plus. Yeah, that's also another one. Yeah, yeah. That's also that, another one. Yeah, that, that's that, also another one. Yeah, Code that's... Plus. Code Plus is basically a a a software development company that I started with my. With my with my other friend, um, mm. Kenoli, uh, who is um a software developer, you know. So we decided to start a software developing company, uh, because we realized that you know a lot of small businesses um um could not afford to have you know to to create a traditional website, you know, because yeah. it's very expensive. Um, outside of uh, what you would get from Wix you know, on Shopify, because you have to pay those, you know, on a monthly mm. basis, you know, and a lot of small businesses cannot afford to, you know, pay um, 300 rand, 400 rand on a monthly basis for those kinds of mm. websites. You know? So uh, we decided that uh, we would start this company where we basically charge um, small businesses like 950 rand for just like a basic website okay. uh, that, you know, you would basically own for a lifetime. You wouldn't have mm-hmm. to pay uh, 350 rand or 200 rand or whatever. You're just going to pay for the hosting fee for your domain mm-hmm. name, which is like 50 rand a month. Okay. You know? So again, um, that is um, one of the projects, you know, that I was that uh, I'm still busy with, you know, mm-hmm. so yeah. Yeah, and, and, and then there, there is... You know, I'm I'm looking at the time, but yeah, let me just let me just say this. Um, the, and then there's the other one. There was this one that I I saw. It's it's for for it's for the driving school, right? Oh, we drive. Yeah, is is, is that an yeah is that a, another one of your projects? Yeah, yeah, that was one of my projects. You know, mm. but I. I, I I basically pulled the plug on that one, you know, okay. because I realized that there was a flaw, you know, in that in that um in that project, you know. But it was basically a marketplace that was connecting um uh, people who were looking for driving schools that was basically mm-hmm. connecting them to driving schools, you know, because a lot of times when people are looking for driving schools, um they do not have, you know, one central place. Where they can go to and basically compare the different prices and services, you know, before yeah. choosing a driving school. So people, you know, have cheaper options, but they don't know that they have cheaper options because a driving school is basically something that you just, you know, you get referred to by your friend yeah. or your family member, but you know, there's no database of, um, you know, a list of the many driving schools in your area. So you actually don't know, you know, that you are paying um, um, for an expensive choice or a cheaper choice, you know. So mm-hmm. I was basically trying to make it easier for people to choose, you know, the the the, the, the base driving cool. school. Yeah, depending on the price, you know, the service that they give mm-hmm. and the review from the... Okay. So I was basically trying to create that, you know, but... Um, I basically pulled the plug on that on that one. Oh, okay, but but it it was a very it was a very smart um idea that you had on on that specific side, you know, because um uh, most people actually have that that problem, you know, it's it's a problem that many people have, and and the solution, it, it was just something else, you know, mm. but. Yeah, but it, it's it's just so sad to to actually hear that you 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 closed um that 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 business down, but but it that also goes to show that in 
not in ev- in everything that you do, not everything you will actually succeed in it, right? There there are yes. things yeah, there are things that you will succeed in and there are things that you will not be um to, to, to that specific point. But all that matters is you keep on moving until you get to that specific point and you get that one thing that you you, you can then start um focusing on and stuff like that, you know. You fail forward, yeah. Yeah, you know. So, but then the most important thing is um, to never give up, you know, because um, you only give, you only, you, you know, you only fail when you give up. Yeah. As long as you don't give up, you will never fail, you know, because when you, when you, when you um, give up, you know, then um, you fail, basically, because, um, you know, when, uh, you keep failing and then you don't give up those are lessons not yeah. failure you know yeah uh, those are lessons because you didn't fail but you just learned why you know something will not work you know for instance uh we drive you know yeah. that was not failure it was just a lesson for me that um it will not work and you know in entrepreneurship you only learn by doing you know yeah. So uh, I have a lot of um, failed uh, projects. You know, I, I, I at one point I also had um, um, uh, another startup, you know, that was basically selling shoes, were importing shoes from China mm. and then was selling them, you know, but, you know, that also failed, you know, and I learned that, you know, why, you know, that wouldn't be successful. You know, mm. so it's also a lot of um other things that I did, you know, that didn't work out, you know. So um always moving forward and failing forward, you know, I know what didn't work, you know, and I know now what to do. Yeah. And based on that experience, you know, I've met a lot of people along the way, you know, and um 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 based on that on those lessons, I know now what to do, you know, mm. um in what I'm doing and you know um how to conduct myself when i i meet new people and when i you know attend um um important meetings you know with shareholders and directors and board members of you know certain companies you know okay. so for me that was never a failure it's always you know learning yeah. learning 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 it's a learning. lesson and as long as i don't give up then you will never fail you know, you fail when you give up. That's the ultimate failure. You know, so as 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 Elon Musk says it, you know, never ever, never give up. Mm. Never give up. You know, because that's the true failure. That's the true. I mean, Elon Musk himself, you know, has had projects that did not work, you know. Um, but um those are not things that people talk about. People talk a lot about his successes. About the wins, know? yeah. I also follow a lot. Um, I also follow a lot of um, um, Strive Masi was content, you know. Uh, okay. Strive Masi is the richest man in Zimbabwe, a uh, billionaire. Okay. Uh, it's Econet and Econet Wireless, you know. So it's a big telecommunications company. Um, so um, he also likes to, you know, um, teach, you know, on his Facebook content, mm. you know, and one of the things that he says is that um, emotional entrepreneurs don't make good entrepreneurs, you know, yeah. um, you can't be emotional about your decisions as an, as an entrepreneur because it's going to cause pain um, to a lot of people, you know, yeah. so when you have to pull the plug, pull the plug you know and keep it moving you know okay don't um um start crying you know and be emotional mm. about it and talking about how you loved that business you know and you know you yeah. have to be, you, know, you can't be emotional because emotions in, in in entrepreneurship will cost you money it will a cost lot of uh, it. your investors money you know it will cost your customers money and it will, mm. it will cost you know a lot of other people money so you can't be emotional. If something is not working, then stop investing in it and keep it moving. You know, mm. do what is working. Um, Strive Masiwa himself also um, pulled um, a lot of, you know, plugs from different 
companies that he was running, you know. Okay. Uh, companies that some were making money, but were not necessarily profitable. You know mm. that the average, well, that the average person that the average person would um, still you know continue running it mm. even if it was still, you know not making any money at all. You know, so um, but for him it was like okay, this thing is not making money. It's actually bleeding money, and it's costing me my my money, and it's also costing me, you know, my investors' money. Investors so money. let me play, let me basically pull the plug on this thing, you know. And it was like, you know, let's basically pull the plug, and then let's do other things. Mm. You know, so I think that's how we should be thinking as entrepreneurs. You know, we should never be emotional, but we should always be, you know, we should always keep it moving and keep it going. You know, mm. um, pay forward, like Mrs. Nakam would say. Yeah, and you could but have a lot of discipline, you know, have a lot of self discipline, you know, um, use money for its intended purpose, you know, um, don't um, use um, the businesses fund in a businesses business funds inappropriately, you know, and engage in social activities, you know, with um, the money of the business. Uh, what I would also say, you know, is that um, keep learning, you know, keep learning new things, you know, um, you can never know enough, you know, um, 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 keep, you know, wanting to better yourself and your business, you know, don't just stay in one place, you know, um, now we have things like chat GPT, you know, um, to help us streamline our business operations, you know. Um, so um, always keep learning and keep evolving. You know? And I think the last thing that I would say, you know, is um, believe in yourself, you know, have a firm, firm, firm belief in yourself. You know, um, don't mind what other people say about you and your vision, you know, and your dreams. You know, only listen um, to um, what you have to say, you know, about yourself and what your heart is telling you, you know, if your heart is telling you that, you know, you have a passion for, 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 for agriculture, um, yeah. then go for it, go and start an agricultural business, business you know, um, do what your heart is basically telling you, you know, um, don't some come to, you know, other people telling you that you can't do it, you know, and um, other people telling you, you know, to, 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 to telling you that, you know, your dream will never work, you know. Um, and also just, you know, have a never um, 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 giving up attitude, you know. Um, don't stop, you know, just even if you, 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 you keep, you know, changing, you know, um, your, the route to where you are going, but never... Um, stop, never give up, you know, and tell yourself that, you know, you're throwing in the towel, this is not working out, never, ever, ever, ever as an entrepreneur do that, no matter how painful or how difficult or how hard it gets, you know, it's just never an option to give up, just keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, and um, ultimately things will, you know, uh, work out for you and things will work you know, in your favor, you know. So, yeah, that's what I would say. Okay. Um, yeah, man, thank you very much for being part of this podcast. Um, and thank you for sharing your story. Now, if the people want to get a hold of you, if people want to see the value that you will be giving out, where can they find you? And also, we will be leaving the link um, to, your, to, your, to, your, to your platform, but could you please um, tell us where can they actually find you? Okay, so on, on Facebook, um, it's Mane Lemoy um, hyphen at Zolam Properties, right? And then um, also on TikTok, it's Mane Lemoy and then you put a hyphen and then Zolam Properties. Um, on Instagram, um, I've temporarily deactivated my account, and you know, also on on Twitter, I've also temporarily deactivated my account. Yeah, and then yeah, so 
And then um, if you want to contact me, you know, regarding buying and selling houses on WhatsApp, then my number is 076-265-8118. Yeah, that's where you can contact me on WhatsApp. Okay. Thank you very much, man, for 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 everything that we that has been shared here on this podcast. And I hope um, the, the the people that are listening to this podcast, the audience, they, that they they not only enjoyed, they weren't only motivated, but even the the, the challenges that they will get to in in, in their own business um, they 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 take the advice that has been given on this on this podcast. They they use the strategies that we have shared in this podcast, you know, and they use them to 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 not only better themselves but to better the people around them, you know. So thank you very much for for, for being part of the, of the podcast. It's it's been a, it's been an absolute pleasure, bro. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Yeah.